Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be doing an analysis of the 7-0 Luna of Ame. This is Extreme Gaming versus Team Falcons. This is game two of the series of Elite League. I'm sure a lot of you guys saw the match, but I really want to break down Ame's performance, and I also want to talk about the draft of this match. So I'm going to be spending about two minutes on the draft, just going over my general thoughts. Then we'll be getting into the farming patterns, decision making, and how Ame was able to break Team Falcons in this match. And this was a very important match because it gives them the momentum for the remainder of the series. So without further ado, let's get into the draft, talk about it, and hopefully get a patch soon. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game Leap website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. For the draft, we see a timber opener. This is very standard for Team Falcons. They love the flex, right? This is one of those teams that just absolutely loves having timber because they can put it off lane or they can put it mid. However, I've noticed that they primarily put it mid. And I will admit, I actually think timber is a bit of a better mid than an off laner, just because sometimes certain 2v1 lanes can bully out timber, where in the 1v1, it tends to do okay. So in terms of the draft, just to pause right here, we saw the Timber. The response is Phoenix Shadow Demon, two supports that have high magic damage against Timber. It also prevents Timber from buying Yules because the Shadow Demon can purge it. Shadow Demon's W, the amp damage spells, is incredible damage against Timber. Shadow Poison is fantastic. Timber has no good way of killing eggs. Sunray is percentage-based damage. The only thing I would say is that the supports lack stuns. Shadow Demon slow is not necessarily back it against Timber because he can still Timber Chain away. On top of that, Timber can instantly kill SD Illusions, so there are some positives to this matchup. So the response to the Phoenix was a Hoodwink, which I personally don't really understand why they picked Hoodwink here. I expected probably something like, well, Shadow Demon for them. Uh, just kind of pick up that Shadow Demon. The Shard is very good against Phoenix. You have some burst damage against the Phoenix. You have set up for Timber Saw, right? Disrupt into, into Timber spells, but they just want to go for the Nuke Draft. Uh, Bushwhack with Timber Saw is interesting, it's interesting because it's good and bad, right? You can set up for the timber train with the acorn shot, but it, if you break the tree, it, it cancels the, the bushwhack stun. I think CM is just kind of the follow up. They like this hero. It's flexible in the laning stage. It can kind of do whatever they need. The Luna comes out here. It's very safe. Basically, the reason why the Luna makes a lot of sense here is if it's the draft, right? You have a Shadow Demon to make illusions of Luna. This is a classic combo. The Shadow Demon illusions are just nasty. They insta kill waves and camps and heroes. Uh, you have a save. You have a lane against Timber. Luna's pretty good against Timber in lane. It's like slightly winning for Luna. And in the game, it's good. Eclipse, very threatening for Timber. Timber does not love Luna. It's not unplayable because you're going to buy an Eternal Shroud. Like, you're against all magic damage. You are buying Eternal Shroud. Uh, but, it, but it's annoying. It forces you to play passive or careful until you have that item. Then we see the Kunkka come out here, which I love for the side of Extreme Gaming. You have Boat with Luna, so you can really group out. You can really group up and just death ball, right? You have the Sunray healing, you have uh, SD save, and you have Kunkka Boat all to enable this Luna. It's a very clear ball up draft. And I also think that Shadow Demon Kunkka is one of the best lanes in the game against Crystal Maiden. The reason why is you disrupt the Crystal Maiden, you torrent, and it's like all of her hell. You can nearly kill her from full with one disruption, plus torrent, plus blood grenade, and like a Shadow Poison or two nearly kills her. It's really hard for a Crystal Maiden and her low HP and low movement speed, low armor, to play the lane. So definitely like this combo. And they also ban out the Lifestealer, which I love because if you're gonna pick Kunkka and you're gonna have all this magic damage, your main concern has to be the Lifestealer. They go for an Alchemist on the side of Team Falcons, which I actually like a lot. A, a BKB completely counters Extreme Gaming. However, they do have Shadow Demon to deal with BKB carries a little bit. So there's somewhat of an answer. You also have Shadow Demon Disruption against Concoction, which is once again, a nice answer, but having a BKB carry is great. I also think Alchemist is not overly pressured by Kunkka. Once Kunkka gets uh, strong in the later levels, you just leave the lane. And so I do like the Alk pick here, even though they end up losing this game. I totally see the angle. I respect the pick and it makes a lot of sense to me. From there, uh, Extreme Gaming bans out the remainder of Amar's heroes. And I think it's good. It kind of forces him to pick the Centaur hero, which like, okay, it's fine. You know, the Centaur is fine. Uh, it's Stampede against Torn Storm, which is nice. It's Stampede against Egg, right? You can get away from the Egg. It's Stampede against Shadow Demon Ulti, which is one of the best uh, interactions in the game for Centaur. When Shadow Demon Ulti is someone, you click Stampede and it gets them away. Uh, and then finally, we see a Leshrac come out, which just completely committing to the ball, right? Extreme Gaming saying, we're not going to try to pick you off. We have no interest in trying to play at uh, three lanes where Team Falcons, they're going to want to play three lanes. They're going to want to keep the map open. They're going to want to hit timings 
where Extreme Gaming is going to want to ball up, go together, take Towers of Lesh W, take Towers of Luna Glaives and Luna Blessing, and Kunga Boat and such. So, yeah, let's get into this game. Let's get into Ame's gameplay, and I'll see you guys there. So for this lane, you definitely have to be really, really, really careful. It's very easy for Luna to get basically half of her health taken from a single Centaur Stomp, because Acorn Shot does a ton of damage, or even Bushwhack. So definitely lane where she's going to be a little bit careful. The big thing as well, I'd, I'd say for Ame here, is paying attention to his uh, Phoenix's W cooldown. Phoenix will use the ability to harass, as we see here. However, once the W is on cooldown, there is a 30 second gap where Phoenix does not have his W. And Ame is going to have to pull aggro and play defensive in that time window. Uh, so he actually messes up there, missed the aggro twice. A little bit unfortunate. Okay, so from minute seven on is what I really want to start watching. So the big thing here is that he's hit level five. Lane's going very, very even, right? You can see he's almost the same net worth as Amar. Uh, and it's very important at this point that he doesn't get gone on outside of the tower, right? The reason why is Luna's main problem as a hero is she's not that tanky, right? You don't buy a ton of stat items, right? You kind of just want to get treads. Optimally, you just buy treads and then you buy Mask of Madness. You don't want to buy Wraith Band. The item is nerfed and you already have a ton of base armor. It feels pretty trash. And so what I like that he does is that even in a situation like this, you kind of just give up the wave and you just say, eh, you have Stampede. I kind of want to wait till at least I'm level six. Maybe you skill Eclipse. Maybe, I mean, with level one losing beam, it's pretty terrible, but it can be okay. And he's just playing defensive. Get Seeds of Serenity. And it's interesting to me that he took it. It's a little odd because you already have Mask of Madness, right? So you, it's like you have this life steal. But if you're going to play the way he does, which is staying in the lane, right? You're going to notice uh, he gets a counter again shortly. When you stay in the lane like this, if you don't have an HP item, you're probably going to get bursted, right? There's a really good chance you will just die from full uh, because, well, Luna's squishy, right? She dies to magic damage. But with Seeds of Serenity, he can afford to play the lane. And I think a lot of carry players just don't understand stuff like this, right? They're just going to take Spark of Courage no matter what. Uh, oh, it's damage. I'm going to farm faster. Yes, but you're going to lose your tier one after you die. You're going to lose map control, right? However, with the Seeds of Serenity, he places it down here, 20 Mon Charges. He's survivable enough. And look what this turns into. Instead of him dying to a three-man gank that most players would die to, because they wouldn't save their wand, they wouldn't take seeds, he lives. They kill the centaur, and now he gets to continue to farm his area. These are the type of plays for Mame that really, really change the game. Small decisions, but very important decisions. Now, after you push out the lane really, really far, right, notice where the wave is, it's here. Once you do that, it is actually efficient on Luna specifically to just start jungling, right? Because of the fact that it's just ridiculously efficient. On top of that, it guarantees that you're gonna get five neutral items for your teammates, and I've been saying this a lot on my videos, but neutral items are key. They are super, super important. People don't put a priority on them. I value them at about seven to 800 gold. I think items like Tisa Serenity, if the hero desperately needs regen, is more of a, a thousand gold item for what it gives. And I really mean that, guys. So keep it in mind, right? Over and over again, he's kind of just defending this tower, making sure that they can't take it. Car wave defended, and it prevents Team Falcons from opening up this top side of the map and making it unplayable for the Luna, which is something they certainly could do if they take down the tower. So now for a period of time, it actually seems like he's completely evading top. Um, reason why is eventually everyone has maxed out nukes and especially the main threat once the game gets to about minute 10 is that, especially minute 11, is that the supports will have ulties, right? Hoodwing, CM is gonna have ulties. And Team Falcons draft, like very, very frequently, not every game, but frequently, they have these burst damage drafts, right? They have Timber, Centaur, Hoodwing, CM. It's like, if you get caught, Seeds of Serenity isn't saving you. <laughs> it's just, it's not enough. And so he's farming these back camps and it's good to understand like, hey, around this 11 minute mark, I can't, probably more like 11, uh, minute 10 with how efficient these players can be. You're just gonna have to get out of lane. And so yeah, he's been playing a very defensive style ever since he's felt that complete threat of double ulti from the support. He's gonna head over to the Ancients now and evade this top side of the map eventually conceding the tower and that's what you should do guys right understand when the enemy team gets ulti and go from there also something that ame does that is very unique is that he does a different skill build than almost every other luna most lunas at this point have max glaive one point in lucent beam and their talent they would also uh likely not have a point in eclipse they would put the point in eclipse in the lucent beam so they'd be two four four with a point in the talent tree but he he doesn't do that at all. He actually goes more of a nuke build. And I can't stress how important this actually is in a game like this because 
it's a hard match, right? You're 4k down, to be fair. Most of it's Elk. It's one of those games. But his Leshrac is having a poor game, right? Leshrac is not doing great. And so let's say he gets ganked. Let's say the enemy makes a major movement. If he is a max W talent Luna with no ult, he's useless, completely useless. This is the this is the, the, the fact of Luna. And you know what happens in a moment from now? He gets jumped. You know what happens when you get jumped, but you have a bunch of stat items? Because he has Dragonlance, doesn't have Manta components, and he has Seeds of Serenity, as well as Salty, you have the ability to turn. And all of a sudden, this skill build kills Skeeter. And these are the types of plays, guys, that br like really break Dota. And I will admit, I think, honestly, if Team Falcons played this game a bit better, they don't force this play. The reason why is they had access to the entire map. And if you know Ame is going to do a skill build like this and an item build like Dragonlance, he's not going to explode onto the game like a Luna with Max W and the Ten Talon might. You will farm a little bit slower. However, plays like this, right, you really want the ulti and it ends up paying off big time. I would say this is the defining moment in the game. The blink timing on Alk always gets a kill in pubs. Almost always. I play a lot of Alk. You basically always get a freebie. And that's what they were looking for on Team Falcons. They didn't find it. Ami turns it around. And so, yeah, uh, like no other carry would have done that at this tournament. Literally none of them. Uh, and time and time again, the bonus HP of this this Falcon Blade is just kind of turning the tides, right? Marlene goes on him. He's just a little bit too tanky. It seems like they're almost thrown off by this Dragonlance and the Seeds of Serenity HP pool. And you could say, oh, that makes no sense, right? There, there's no way they're not good enough to, to realize that. But I mean, this is two mistakes in a row trying to kill a Luna. That's just a bit too tanky. Now, for the next few minutes, he's working on getting to his BKB timing. The main plan for extreme gaming seemingly is to just kind of play around this Roche timing on Luna's BKB, right? I think that's what they want to do. And it makes sense, right? When you have the Luna BKB, if you take Roche, you're going to be able to complete your shard shortly after that. And then... I you know, then you can start pushing tier twos. You can start really trying to close out the game with this death ball comp. Uh, and so he does actually TP top. The reason why guys, just so you see a TP like this, is just because of the double wave. So in general, I don't recommend TPing for waves. Like, honestly, I don't even know how I feel about this TP. I think because he's so close to BKB and that is their team's timing, it makes sense. But a lot of the time, if your support's close to an item, you can just give them the XP if they're already here or the gold. But it definitely makes sense in a scenario like this you're close to a key timing and it's a double wave like some giga double wave plus shadow demon is not close to anything he truly does not need the items um in a scenario like this it's absolutely wonderful to do what ame did uh and tp for that but then you're gonna go back to your engines just because it's generally safe as long as your team is bottom however guys I, something i want to say quickly if your team isn't bottom you don't have to farm ancients on luna obviously it's the most efficient thing you can do ancients plus lane creeps but you don't have to. The other side of the map is fine. You will still get farm. A lot of I, I have carries in my pubs that seem to think that you like have to play the triangle as a carry. You don't, right? Like it's good. It's a good default. It's a good rule of thumb to like go to the triangle in the mid game, but you don't have to. If it's dangerous, just go to the other side of the map and farm. Uh, but okay, getting into the team fight. Here we go. BKB online. They get the BKB out of Alk, which is obviously a good start to the fight. I will say, I think Torn storming a BKB Alk is very cringe, but yeah, they go into the Hoodwink. I love what he's doing here, right? He's moving backwards, kind of targeting this Hoodwink because the Hoodwink's out of position. He's far back. A lot of people always run forward. You actually want to, if you have the option to run back and kill people behind you so that you keep your team together, you keep your team as a ball. Because when you do that, you allow your uh, team to stay together. And then if your team gets gone on, anyone gets gone on, you can help each other. It's exactly what happens. SD gets jumped and they're able to turn it around. Bloodstone from the Lush comes out. They aren't able to burst him. And the glue and the glaives go crazy. <laughs> Luna, when she just gets untouched and people are, are clumped up, it is a nasty Dota hero. So after he gets Roche, I want to talk about what he does because it's very important. It's a good, uh, it's just good to know what to do after you get Aegis so you can close out the game. So gets Aegis, drops his one, of course, buys the shard, always buy your shard after bkb you can even buy before bkb if they don't have as much magic damage and then he tps top so a big part of this tp is that when the wave is pushing in like this especially a double wave there's guaranteed in this case a wave behind it unless they side pulled which didn't happen and so 
you just get to farm so much by TPing like this. What are the downsides? Well, it's risky. You could die. However, the enemy team just died. You kind of know that they're not out on the map. You have this really good top ward. He sees the Alk, sees the Centaur, and his team is obviously coordinating around this, right? They are smoking across the map. In your pubs, if your team isn't going to flip the map, don't TP like this. You are griefing the map state. You are splitting up your five heroes. If you have a draft like Extreme Gaming, don't split the map. Just literally pick a lane and run down the closest lane to your team. Like in this case, it would have been bottom. This flip the map is good because they're going to smoke across. They find the timber. Uh, he gets a ton of farm, right? He kicks out the CM here, prevents her from cutting the wave, gets the next wave. And believe it or not, I'm sure you could believe it. He hits the tower, right? Nothing crazy. Glyph comes out, gets the glyph with the mask of madness, takes the tower. Easy peasy. Actually backs off a little bit. Looks like he wants to farm up his phylactery, which it's kind of weird because he can't even slot it in yet. <laughs> uh, but they're going to go high ground, right? It's it's easy peasy. When you have a draft like this, don't complicate things. The only reason he didn't instantly push is because he wanted to wait for the wave to come in, right? And oh, they find the CM. He's level 20. Good disruption. He was afraid of the bushwhack. And here we go. He, he's definitely afraid to hit. Like he doesn't want to. Oh, he gets earned. Nice. They haven't earned. <laughs> he doesn't just want to burn Aegis, which makes sense. Oh, Lush getting gone. I was going to say, is this Lush really tanky enough to stand there? He's definitely tanky enough to bait. Very Chad from XM. One thing I will say about Extreme Gaming is their players are extremely Chad. They have no problem getting gone on, taking risk, initiating. Like some teams, you can tell that no one on the team wants to go in first. And it's something I often have a problem as a play as a player. I, I like to try to clean up and counter initiate. Uh, but it's something I've been working on, which is like if you think you ha are in an advantageous position or you see someone out of position, you're quick and you take risk. Right. Uh, obviously, it's not just being stupid, right? <laughs> like people will be like, oh, I'm Duraccio. I initiate. It's like, are you you got to look at the map a little to be Duraccio, like not a lot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, you have to really have good map awareness, you know, be a Duraccio type player where you're really getting in there or an XSS like this guy's slaughter is insanely aggressive. It was like some of the crazy shit I've seen watching his slaughter. It's like super, super aggressive. This is like blinking up hills blind. And, but you know it, it allows your team to to counter initiate right when the lush gets gone on the luna goes untouched and that happened kind of two fights in a row right this lush gets gone on he lives both times one of them he got saved but lives both times uh, at this point he's farming backwards i like this they took the two sets they don't have aegis anymore so i mean you got to be a little bit afraid it's it's not free they have chain stun plus uh, timber you could get exploded so he's only hitting the tower here like trust me you wouldn't hit this tower if you don't see five heroes you would wait to see that to see someone you'd wait and you'd smoke yourself you'd wait and you'd hold a hill good players will never just hit a tower like that i mean he has shadow demon so maybe you can take the risk i think there's a, there's a chance because of that because of the shadow demon but until you see people you can chill like even here he's very hesitant to, t to hit the tower as oh instantly lash gets jumped uh he's hesitant because well this is what it looks like right he's way less tanky than lash you know the lash has a bunch of spell i steal Maybe a Kai Assange too. Yeah, like, I mean, look at these items, right? Even this thing. Like, the Luna is way more squishy. And so, he actually should not siege. And a lot of people don't get this. They'd be like, ah, we won the last fight. We're 17k ahead. We're gonna end the game. And then it's like, you, you just get exploded because they five-man focus you. I mean, once again, he could get disrupted. But then you're half HP and you have to run away using your BKB. It's, it doesn't feel good. But easy peasy. Good stuff from Extreme. Letting the ledge rack go in. Cleaned it up. And yeah, this was the uh this was the start of the end for Team Falcons. I mean, really impressive from XG. Extremely good performance from Ame. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.